hey y'all hey welcome back to my channel my name is jay and if you are new here welcome today's video as promised is going to be porosity focused but in conjunction with talking about porosity i'm also going to start my spring slash summer curly hair series where i'm going to be doing a lot more curly hairstyles and i'm also going to be trying a bunch of new or not necessarily new but maybe new to me products and product combos for like wash and goes, twist outs, things of that nature. So if you have any hairstyles or any products that you'd like for me to try and or review, make sure you leave those in the comment section. Okay, let's jump right into today's video. If I'm not looking directly at the camera, it's because I do have notes in front of me so that I don't miss any talking points or skip over anything that I was really trying to mention, okay? Okay, so this hair is freshly washed and deep conditioned and today I'm going to do a chunky twist out. So what is porosity? Well, in a nutshell, porosity refers to your hair's ability to absorb and retain moisture. There are three main categories for porosity, from low to medium or normal to high porosity. Low porosity is when the cuticle layer of your hair, the cuticles are tight and close together and mostly smooth and closed basically it's a lot harder for moisture to get into your hair shaft but once it's in there friend it's in there like swimwear okay medium or normal porosity is when your hair absorbs and retains moisture at like a balanced level and then for high porosity, like free flowing, the moisture comes in and the moisture goes because those cuticles are really open. Now that you know what porosity is, how do you test it? How do you figure out what your hair's porosity is? First, let me tell you what not to do. What is it, the float test? You take a strand of your hair and you put it in a cup of water and if it floats or if it sinks or if it's in the middle, blah, blah, blah. There are way too many factors to consider when doing a test like that to get the most accurate results. So for my twist out, I will be using the Urban Hydration line. I'm using their Daily Moisturizer and their Laid and Slay Pro Gel. Of course, I will leave the link to everything that I use in the description below. I think I'm gonna top the twist with this Nairobi foam and maybe a little bit of chi just because I like the way it feels and I like the smell. I do have a water bottle full of warm water to keep my hair damp. I would encourage you to pay attention to how your hair reacts to certain things. Number one, do you feel like it takes a lot for your hair to get fully saturated? Do you feel like you're standing under the water for a long time on wash day before your hair actually gets wet? might be an indication that you have low porosity hair. What about once you've styled your hair? After you've like initially styled your hair, is your hair dry by the end of the day? Or do you feel like you could go maybe two or three days without needing to add more product? And when you do add more product, you notice a lot of buildup? Or do you feel like your hair is like as good as new when you add product? These may be indications of what porosity you might fall under. One key factor to consider, no matter what porosity you are, if you don't clarify your hair on the regular, you might be fighting a losing battle. <laughs> like So like, if you feel like your hair, after you initially style it, is dry by the end of the day, you may have product buildup, or you might be on the high porosity side. If you can go a few days after initially styling your hair and your hair is still moisturized, you might be normal to low porosity. So when I get to the end of my twist, I'm just gonna put a perm rod. I know my hair looks so dry, y'all, but I promise you it is still damp. <laughs> Let's talk product selection. I know you've probably read that if you have low porosity hair, you should avoid heavy oils and butters. This is true. But that doesn't mean ever, ever use them. It's more of a in moderation. I'm going to try to explain this and I hope that I can articulate this in a way that makes sense. I wouldn't be afraid of using them. I just would be careful in what order I use them. So for instance, my hair 
that is freshly cleaned and deep conditioned, right? My first product that I'm going in with, the first ingredient is water. The second ingredient is glycerin. Water hydrates your body, water hydrates your skin, water hydrates your hair. Glycerin is a humectant, which humectants draw the moisture from your surroundings into your hair. Top notch, okay, especially for low porosity because once you use those types of ingredients first, those are soaking and seeping into your hair shaft, the hair is going to be moisturized. This gel is actually marketed towards low porosity hair. It says style tip, best for low porosity hair. Ingredients are water, a few things I can't pronounce, glycerin, hydrogenated castor oil towards the bottom, honey extract, vitamin E and vitamin A. So I wouldn't look at this product and say, oh my gosh, it has castor oil in it, throw it away. I'm just gonna know that when I use this product, I need to make sure my hair is moisturized first before I go in with products that may have the potential to sit on top of my hair shaft. Does that make sense? You also need to consider what you like your hair to look like. When I wear my hair curly, I do like a more clumped, defined curl if you like your hair um, more voluminous and like you don't mind a little bit of frizz then you may not use as much product as I'm using or you may choose to use a lighter product altogether. This should go without saying but I am not a licensed cosmetologist. I am not making a blanket statement for every low porosity girl on the planet. I'm only telling you things that I have done with my hair and what I've noticed has worked for me. Okay so feel free to take the information I give you and tailor it to you if you didn't know i used to be like a kitchen beautician <laughs> so i used to do hair like back in the gap and what i noticed was a lot of people thought that they had high porosity hair when in reality they had a tremendous amount of buildup on their hair that's why i tell you clarifying your hair is so important Let's jump back into some ingredients that you may want to use in moderation if you identify as low porosity. Coconut oil is another one. It's in a lot of products that I like. But what you would never see me do is like buy a jar of pure coconut oil and like put that on my hair thinking I'm, I'm moisturizing it. Along with castor oil, coconut oil, another one is mineral oil. These oils are just heavy and they have the potential to sit on top of your hair and block moisture from getting into it. I am focusing these gels more on my roots because I don't want them to be puffy and frizzy. Some lightweight oils that I like when I'm looking for products would be jojoba oil, sweet almond oil, grapeseed oil, argan oil. I feel like I'm missing some, but I'll just like put them on the screen somewhere. Another thing that I would make sure that I'm doing is I would always use a conditioner when I'm shampooing my hair. Deep condition if you have the time. I went a period in my hair care journey where I wasn't deep conditioning and I didn't feel the need to because I had my moisture routine down pat, I'm telling you. But since I wear my hair stretched and straight a lot now, I do make sure I incorporate a lot more deep conditioning treatments in my routines. Another ingredient that I've seen people who identify as low porosity be afraid of is protein. There is hydrolyzed protein in a lot of products that I use. Again, all hair types need protein. You can become sensitive to it, so you do need to be careful when using it. On the topic of products, I think I'm gonna leave a list of like clarifying shampoos, deep conditioners, and styling products that I personally use or have used and like in the description. So there will be some high-end products in there, but there'll also be some affordable products as well. I don't know what it is, but this side of my hair, this this portion of my curls has always been a lot less defined. I don't know what that's about. Maybe that's just what the curls wanna do. I don't know. Just Remember, clarify your hair, condition your hair, and then the first product that you use when you're about to style your hair, it must be a moisturizing product. If you follow that order, I promise you, you will start to see better results with your styles and with your hair overall. Don't be afraid to try products, you guys, because trial and error is how I got to where I am. This amount of gel. 
Hold on, I forgot to put on the twist. I forgot to put the cheese serum on there. That's okay, I'll do it when I take it down tomorrow. I have four chunky twists. And they are really wet because as you saw, I used a lot of water and a lot of product. So I'm gonna go sit under the dryer and then I'm gonna throw on a bonnet, go to bed. And I'll be back tomorrow when I take my hair down to show you guys the final result. I think I sat under the dryer like an hour and a half yesterday. I slept last night. My hair is still a little bit damp, but that's, I mean, whatever. These are really big sections. So another thing I'm noticing is like really close up, there's a little bit of, bit of like white flakes. So I guess one of those products maybe doesn't like each other. And these are not my favorite results, just like initially looking at it, but that's okay. That's why I'm doing a series. I have to remember how I used to do my hair. Okay, so I mean, I don't hate it. this video to be helpful and you want to see more just like this one go ahead and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe okay